Welcome back, Barrier Breakers, to The Balance Beam. I'm your host, Nikita Thigpen, president of Thigpen Professional, relationship expert and business consultant for professional women who are entrepreneurs who definitely desire to get unstuck, off aisle, and on the road to awesome. Today's special guest is someone who is underestimated on all levels. Uh, She is a phenomenal woman doing great things and understands that growing roots and nurturing is an essential component for growing a healthy team, organization, and business. Miss Megan Wessels is a phenomenal woman who happens to be chapter president of the Chicago chapter of National Association of Professional Women. Um, And she's a long-standing account manager of over 20 years in a family business called Accurate Color and Compounding. Megan is a force to be reckoned with. I know this personally. She has been a great asset to me and is a leader in her community. She does extravagant, great things in fundraising for Dress for Success and other charities that she's a part of, and she's just truly, undeniably an amazing leader. Welcome, Megan. Thank you, Nikita. You're welcome. How are you today? I am excellent. Glad it's Friday. (laughs) Well, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you're balancing all these thousands of hats that you wear every day. Um... Well, to start off with, um, I think the most important thing is to have goals. And if you're going to commit yourself to something, make sure that what you're committing yourself to is in line with your goals for the future. Um, That's one of the reasons that I devote so much time to the National Association of Professional Women. Uh, It's been an excellent, excellent, excellent learning uh, experience. And one of the goals for my future is to be a leader in my community, um, and also to uh, improve my public speaking skills and to build a, a really big network in Chicago. NAPW has, has brought all of that to me. It is a lot of time devotion, um, but it's also been a learning experience from a leadership standpoint, which is another reason that I took on the role. Um, I want to start my own business. Uh, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. My father started the company that I currently work with 20 years ago. His father was an entrepreneur. Both of my mother's parents were entrepreneurs. So it's just in my blood, and uh, I've kind of been working up to it. Um, The leadership experience I've gotten from NAPW is like nothing I could have read in a book or in a magazine, the experience has been just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I've learned to build a team of people and um, grow a chapter, which is pretty much like growing a company. So I've gotten all this experience and made mistakes along the way that I've learned from, but they haven't cost me anything because it's simply a volunteer position. So it's been really great. Um, and the, as far as the family business goes, I am an account manager. We manufacture color for plastic. Uh, so most of my clients are Midwestern manufacturers. So I go from a lot of Midwestern men to a group of professional women on a weekly basis. It's, it's a pretty cool experience. That has and to be a cool experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a difference. So I'm curious because your chapter is um, pretty huge. Like we have about 390 people, maybe 392 now. You know, every day there's always someone else joining, which is awesome in the Philadelphia chapter. But you're over 600 people in the Yeah, chapter. we broke 600 this week. Oh, my God, that's craziness. It's awesome, but it's also very yeah. crazy. <laughs> How are you managing to lead such a significantly large chapter? That's a lot of professional women. It is. Um, One of the things I've done is I've created a leadership team. So it's essentially members who donate their time to the success of our chapter. And each one of them have a specific role, and I've put them all in roles that really um, accentuate what their talents or their expertise is. 
and um, it's been an essential part of the growth of our chapter because I could not do all of this by myself. And one of the reasons our chapter is growing is because we have so many powerful women on our leadership team. So it's a win-win. And uh, just the growth of our chapter, I realize, you know, be, I'm, because we have so many more members now, um, it's, it's requiring a lot more attention. And, you know, like the growth of a company, you have to learn when to let certain things go, certain tasks that you've been doing for a while that tend to be more busy work that you can delegate, you have to start delegating that to somebody else on your team. And that's basically what I've been doing, adding on leadership team members, people who want to get more involved in the chapter, and um, delegating some of the busy work to them. And it's, it's really given me a chance to focus on the growth of our chapter and make sure that we're growing successfully. Well, that is good. Um, that, but you brought up a, a point, is learning to let go some of those things, mm -hmm. and that therein lies a trust of yourself. You know, what do you trust to hand over? Because it's been your baby for quite a, a long time, and you've nurtured it. You've grown it, groomed it, excuse me. You've grown it. You've seen some of the, the not-so-great parts of things, and you've worked out those kinks, and now to hand it over um, to one or more people to handle that one task that you used to do, one of many of, it that takes a lot of trust in yourself as well as those other people. How how did you decide, to, you know, who could handle what? I think the first step is to really take a look at, um, like, my time and how valuable my time is. And if I have this goal in the future for whether it's a personal goal, whether it's a goal for our chapter, how are we going to get there if I am devoting all the time to these tasks? Um, and to really take a look at some things that can be let go of. Um, a, one of the things that I recently delegated to another leadership team member is our chapter event. Um, it's one of the things that I've always, I've always held on to because it is such an important part of our chapter and represent, representation of our chapter because people come to the monthly event and they see who are, you know, who we are and, and what our chapter is like, and they decide whether or not they want to get more involved. Um, so, but at the same time, you know, I have a schedule already, a draft schedule already put together for 2014, and um, people assigned to be the host for those specific workshops or, you know, um, locations chosen, everything um, except for the date. So basically just pass all that on over to these this leadership team of event planning, and they're taking it from there. Um, I completely trust them to do it. It's all laid out for them, and they also, they also know that if they have any questions or anything, they can always come back to me. So, right, because yeah, it's just one of the door. things. But now, yeah, but now I can focus on the the growth of our chapter and creating more programs that are going to benefit our chapter members, so that they continue to be engaged with with our chapter and get the benefits out of it. Well, that, that's good because that means that you're a leader's leader. Like you know how to lead by serving as well. So you know to be available for your leadership team and not for just to be a one-way stream of information um, pouring Absolutely. down upon their heads. Absolutely. Um, Servant so, leadership is very, very important. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It, it definitely does wonders. I know you and I were talking before, I think, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago when um, I was trying to create a new leadership team and I was looking at it with a compartmentalized way of thinking. I had totally separated my leadership style in business from the way that I handle my chapter presidency with NAPW. Not really sure why I compartmentalized that. I never sat with myself to address that, to be quite frank. <laughs> um, <laughs> but after having a really nice and detailed conversation with you, you were able to give clarity to remembering the important things that you've learned in business and through your skill and experience and expertise and applying it to the, those same principles over. And that means making sure you have great people to support you as you support them and for you not to get overwhelmed with trying to do every single thing yourself because then you end up doing what you've done before and it wasn't successful. You take on way too many tasks, you juggle everything, and you're going to drop the ball in something. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. That's true. And, and like I said, you know, having goals also helps. If you can, if you can visualize the future and know 
that you have to um, let go of certain things in order to get there, then it's all the more reason to do so. <laughs> Absolutely. Making room for that abundance. I am 100% mm-hmm. believer in that on every level, in life, in love, and in business. <laughs> yeah. Make room. Let go of those old things and those old ways and sometimes those old people. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, one of my favorite um, uh, speakers, Tony Robbins, says, uh, the past, um, the past does not equal the future unless that's where you live. So unless you focus on the past all the time and what happened, bad things that happened in the past, that's when you continue to have bad things. But if you let it go and focus on the future, it's in the past and it does not equal the future. Absolutely, I'm a hundred percent believer in that. And Tony is awesome. <laughs> Yes, you are so right. So I'm curious, you know, going future forward with um, leadership and all those things, you've had some great people step up and show themselves. Um, But do you really feel like that they literally stepped up and said, hey, Megan, I'm available. I happen to have these good traits, these good good skills, and I'm here. Because, again, you have such a large group that identifying those committed people can get overwhelming when you have multiple people vying for the same position. Or do you feel like you kind of had to cultivate some of those leaders? Like they had the skills and expertise, but the leadership compartment of wanting to own something, commitment wasn't the issue, but they just wanting to own that role and knowing that they would be valued in your group and not just kind of one of many, um, for lack of a better phrasing. Did you have to cultivate that out of them or, or were they already there and present and you just literally nurtured them as a part of your group? Well, I think being a leader and creating leaders beneath you, um, that comes from the leader. So, yeah, cultivating leadership is is part of my responsibility if I want things to get done. So, for instance, um, you know, letting letting certain things go and and letting those leadership team members make their own decisions without having to come to me all the time for approval. Just letting them know that I trust them and that, um, you know, their their position is at their discretion. And um, if they see other ways that they can grow that position or add to the growth of our chapter with that position, then I give them full, you know, creative ability to do so. Um, and, and, you know, they always come to me and talk to me about different things, different ideas that they have. And... And I do my best to make those things happen so that they can have more trust in me and the fact that what they're contributing is making a difference. Absolutely. That makes sense. Um, And having a good supportive team under your NAPW hat, which, again, is just one of many that you wear, does allow you to have a better balance across the board of the different things that you're handling and the the personal and professional um, avenues that you're also juggling and traveling. Um, So I am curious, given though you've been a part of a family business which has its own dynamics, right? (laughs) Oh, absolutely. I'm (laughs) working for the family. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, I'm curious about how that plays out with you have, again, these multiple hats, as many, many professional women do. Um, Yours is very unique, though, because your traditional nine to five hours, um, the bulk of your, your daytime, awake time, Um, part of your day is committed to family. And then, of course, you still see them, play with them, love on them, check on them after hours in the midst of these other hats. And you got a new beau. So how is that balancing out with him? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Good good with him. As far as the family goes, um, yeah, I've been with the family business for nine years, and it's been a learning experience because, um, my father is my boss, and he's also my dad. So there are times when, you know, those those paths cross, and he will come down on me more as a fatherly role than a boss role, or vice versa, um, uh, or encourage me more as a father than um, than a boss would normally. So it's it's been um, tricky to learn the balance, but I guess if you you look at it from a perspective of, all right, well, this is just another person that I'm working, you know, that it's, it's somebody that I'm working with. And if I, if I always thought if I can learn to get through to my father, 
then I can I can get along with anyone. So um, <laughs> that's always kind of been my goal is to learn different ways to get through to him. So I've realized that if I come to him with an idea about maybe the company, um, he actually gets to this because it's his baby. So I've had to learn to approach him in a different way. And that's just him. But, you know, um, it's part of doing business and being successful is learning how to deal with people in all different types of environments. So, yeah, I've had to learn to um, put something out there but then let him think that it was his idea. Yes. <laughs> so he, he's more accepting of it. So, yeah. Um, and then and then my sister also works at the company. I talk to her on a daily basis. She's customer service. I'm in sales. So she does a lot of the service for my customers. Um, my brother is in shipping. And there's people that have been working for our company since, uh, since day one that are still there. And they also become part of the family. So it's actually, um, I like it. I worked for GE Financial in the past. And the fact that it was a public company and people didn't really matter really bothered me because I saw at home the family business is being run completely differently. My father did care about people. He, he still does to this day. I mean, if, if we were in financial risk, my dad would cut his own pay to make sure that his employees had paychecks to take home that week. That's just how it is. So, um, you know, and, and also having respect for all the time and effort that he's put into building this company from the ground, making it into the success that it is today. And, it's kind of interesting. It, we talk about, you know, you go home at night and you're you're with your family. We don't really talk about business with the when we're together. Um, it might come up every once in a while, but when we're together, it's just it's a natural environment for family. We don't really talk about business. So it's been a, it sounds like you got good boundaries, which is great. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I mean, I feel very, very, very lucky to have the opportunity to work in a business and also see my father grow a company from the ground up and, and all the people went through and how he overcame everything. So the mistakes he's made, um, you know, what what I would what I would replicate that he's done, but also what I would do differently. Absolutely. And, like it sounds like he's been an amazing mentor in many respects. Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. And helping grow you. I am curious, how far apart are you and your siblings in age? A uh, sister younger and younger, and brother is nine years younger. Oh, okay. So you're lucky. You don't have too much of that. We got into a fight at Thanksgiving, and now I see you at work the next day, and I'm not talking to you. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's it's so weird. I don't know if it's just our family or what, but we really don't fight. <laughs> that is very um, we weird. We might have disagreements every <laughs> once in a while, and then maybe, but we still talk to each other. We just we just find we find the right time to talk it out or hug it out, I guess you could say. <laughs> but um, yeah, we don't we don't really carry that with us into the business or you know personally. I think that that speaks volumes because that's not normal. Let me just put that out there in the, in the universe. That's not normal <laughs> for any other household. More than anything, it's a level of respect that you have for each other. You know, um, I respect my brother and sister because I know that, you know, my sister works her butt off. She's a single, she's a single mom. Um, she has a boyfriend, but uh, she's not married. And um, she works full time. She's got two kids now. I have the mm-hmm. utmost respect for her and, and what she does for the company, what she contributes to the company. And my brother, he does a great job, too. And then, you know, everybody else. It's, it's looking at it from a team aspect. You know, we're all a team. The company wouldn't be successful without every every piece of our puzzle. Absolutely. Well, with the entrepreneurial blood you have running through your veins, the fact that you grew up seeing the grit that it would really take with love and energy and focus and strategic planning um, and making sure that you were selfless in the midst of all those things, because you were literally groomed that way, I think it makes sense that uh, your your father's house at work, so to speak, is a mirrored image of what it is at home. Um, yeah. And it, it doesn't make sense that it would be any other way. I didn't think about it that way, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> He's practicing what he preaches, and you guys are following along um, in tow, which is perfect, which is 
the reason, I think, or part of the reason, because you have your own experiences outside of it, obviously, just being a human being and a woman, um, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously the, those are really different. Those things help you to be successful under your NAPW hat, help you to be successful, obviously, when you're working in your account manager hat, and then going forward, it's going to be the key of your success to kind of lead in with that tenacity and steadfastness that you you were cultivated under. Like, you don't know any other way, which is good. No one has to true. deprogram you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like I said, I consider myself very lucky. You are, and I think it's amazing, and it, it just makes sense. And I think you're underestimated because of it. Um, people underestimate the non-normal because it just seems too perfect, but you have some grit under there. Like there's, you know, you've got some stuff that's hiding under there that's just waiting to break out, and I'm excited to see it. I know it's going to be coming soon, so I'm looking forward to Thank it. Thank you. Oh, very soon, very soon, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exciting. Um, so speaking of your bow, I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. <laughs> <laughs> How are you finding time for rest and relaxation and whichever form that comes in? for both yourself, independent of all these spectacular things you do during the day hours, and especially some intimacy time with him to just build your relationship and not be in leader mode when you're with him because you just want to be with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, um, I, I'll be honest with you. It's one thing that I've, I've actually been working on for a while as far as the, you know, learning to, to be a, a woman in a relationship and, and not the leader and um, uh, excuse my French or whatever. One of my girlfriends used this um, comment, you have to learn to leave your balls at work. And yeah. I think it's a really good description of, you know, at work, I'm, I'm, I'm closing deals, I'm going for the sale, I'm going for the kill. You, you cannot treat a relationship, you can't treat a man like that. So learning to take that hat off and come home and be the woman and let him take care of me, it, it's, it has been a learning process. Um, I have to remind myself every once in a while to, you know, let him be the one to take care of me and the leader and um, follow his lead and thank him for doing things. So um, it's been, that's been the, the success I think one of the most important parts of the success of our relationship. Um, and also, I made, um, I think what, you know, what you focus on is uh, what becomes reali reality. And I really made it a point, uh, middle part of this year, that that was one of my, my main focuses, was to find a relationship, you know, a successful relationship. And to make time, make that a priority in my life and, and make time for it. And because I put so much time and energy into making sure that that was going to happen, it did happen. Um, I feel very, very lucky that I happened to find such a wonderful man so quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't normally happen like that. I've been single for seven years, believe it or not, dating off and on, but no serious relationships. And um, I think you just, you know, one of the most important factors is really being ready for a relationship. And I was absolutely ready. I was focused. I was ready. I was, you know, reading books, doing what I needed to do in order to be that person that was going to find a successful relationship and, and the type of man that I wanted. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. Um, maybe it's just the time of the month that this is all coming up because we're running, you know, running into the end of the year. Um, a lot of the private coaching that I do um, is a mix of the life management consulting and the business strategy, strategy for the professional woman who's an entrepreneur. So obviously she's working with both hats. And the theme this month has been just about that, um, literally making room for what you want to come in your life, kind of envisioning it or dreaming it, and then really believing that it can happen um, so mm -hmm. you can see it. Um, I mean, if you want to get biblical, write it down, make it plain. I mean, it's very obvious that these are things that have to happen, and people use these principles, and they work when you really, really use them, um, but you mm -hmm. have to believe in the process. process um, where actually, I guess I'll let the, the bird out of the bag, so to speak, early, it's a few months early, our next intensive that will be coming up, um, is preparation for prosperity, and it really is about cleaning out all of those ugly spaces, those cobwebs, and making room 
for the success you want in your life, whether it be just in your regular life, your relationship with yourself, your love life, whether you're married, not, or looking for, you know, to go to that next level with someone, even if you haven't found him or her yet, um, and, of course, in your business. And it really is a process, and there's different tactical things that you have to do. Your strategic hat has to be on, but not so tight that you lose a sense of self and you become this walking, talking robot because you're following, wait, plan A said he must look like this. You know, he must have mm. these characteristics. We, I must meet him here. He must say these things to me. <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. Um, I actually had a friend um, who not that long ago, and she's a very traditional Southern girl. She just really, really, truly believes in her heart that she has to be courted, that who she looks at and finds as attractive can't possibly be the person that is meant to be in her life because he has to find her. Um, like that she can't see him first. And I think it's very superstitious and very wacky, and I tease her about it all the time. Um, and I keep telling her, you're going to keep holding yourself in this box that you put yourself in, mm-hmm. and you're going to walk right by him, um, <laughs> especially in 2013, leading into 2014. Um, oh, but it's yeah. really important, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, I, had the, I actually met my guy on a blind date, which is kind of funny. My parents met on a blind date, and they're still married, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah, but um, but I I found um, going back to Tony Robbins, uh, I actually found a video of his that really really helped me. Uh, you know, I've been reading um, books and stuff too, but his video I think was the key. Um, it talked about it's a very short video. It's something like being how to be ready for a relationship, and he talks about um, kind of what they talk about in the secret know where you visualize or you focus on something. Um, well, I had a list of qualities that I wanted in a man, but it was a very, very long list. And in the video, he said that he also had a list of qualities he was looking for in a woman, and his was like several pages long. He took a look at it one day and was like, I'm never going to find all these qualities in one person. So he narrowed it down to the absolute must that he had to have in a person. And I did the same. And then he also he suggested making a list of the absolute cannot have in a person um, because if you sometimes when you're looking for what you want, you get a bunch of stuff that you don't want if you don't identify those things you don't want. And then the third part of it, which I think is the most important, is to identify the type of person you need to be in order to attract that person. And those were some of the things that I had to work on. So if I wanted a man who was strong and um, protective and you know, had good family values and everything, I needed to learn to be a lot more patient and open-minded and, um, you know, willing to let him take the lead sort of thing. So it was it was a really cool experience just writing, you know, figuring out what the absolute must were and then what, you know, I absolutely couldn't have and also what type of person do I need to be and, and to focus on those. Um, yeah, I read, I, I had them on a piece of paper and I read them on a daily basis. I sit at, sat at Nesca set it next to my toothbrush so every day in the morning when I go to brush my teeth and at night when I go to brush my teeth, I'd read it. So, No, that absolutely makes sense. I mean, it's very Napoleon Hill with speaking, you know, speaking things into your life that you want mm-hmm. to see and making sure your subconscious hears it so it becomes very ingrained into the process of, of your being so that you can truly achieve it. Um, it definitely makes sense. And you should have every person on this planet, especially women, should have absolute news. Um, I think having the must are very important, although people get a little wacky with the must. And like he mm-hmm. said, your, your list turns into 10 pages and you, you forgot what some of those things were because it became so um, narrowed down to it. She must have brown hair with blonde highlights. She must, you know, like it gets so crazy sometimes when you really focus on too many of those musts that maybe aren't the necessaries of the must um, mm-hmm. or what you define as must and having that introspective conversation with yourself on paper about what you will do to make sure that you're, you know, validating those things that you're looking for someone else. You can't ask someone else to be credit worthy and um, have a, a certain level of income or certain athletic build if you are you know, no offense to anyone, but if you're 400 pounds and your credit is 250 points and you're not yeah. really working, that's not fair for you to act that of someone else. So I think that introspective process is 
really important and great. And then the absolute no's help you to identify what you're willing to accept and not accept. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, for my clinical social work hat, doing a lot of counseling, I'm always talking to women and families, sometimes it's the men as well, about things that just absolutely should not be happening. He should not be hitting you. You should not be hitting him. That is an absolute no. It cannot happen, and you can't justify it. Well, I think one of the things you and I mentioned, um, talked about briefly before, was how you feel about yourself and how important that is. I mean, that that I cannot say anything else is more important in business, personal, professional life than loving yourself. You have to love yourself before you can be successful. You have to love yourself before you can find somebody who's going to love you. And and that's loving everything about yourself too. The way you the way you look. If you don't like the way you look, you need to go out and make an effort to change that. That's not anybody else's responsibility. And and then appreciate the fact that you're working so hard to do so. Um, and and then also you know your professional life. Like if you don't love what you do, then change that. Do something that makes you happy and makes you feel good about yourself and your life. I mean Absolutely. everything you do is a choice. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And inaction is a form of action. I totally agree with that. If you're not getting off the couch and you're eating bonbons and Turkey Hill ice cream all day, you know, that inaction, that inability to work out and do different things to build your energy and your stamina is going to be reflective in everything you do and every aspect of your life. And it's a form of your action of saying you don't value yourself enough to do those next things and and get on that next level. I totally agree. And I also think that you know, no matter no matter what you look like, you don't have to be thin to to find the right person. Yeah, there is somebody out there, one one, and I know that because I have friends that you know, who are not that attractive, but you know they're they're in very very happy relationships, and they found the right person. So, I mean, it's just there's somebody out there for everyone. It, but I think more importantly, you have to know who what you're looking for and know who you are and the type of person you need to be. I was just going to say that takes you right back to what you said and what we were talking about pre-call is you really have to be happy with who you are, and that includes being healthy. And I'm not talking about heart disease or issues or things that are, you know, genetic and you can't control, but if you're yourself, yourself, you can't be, you know, waiting for this lover to come along and sweep you off your feet onto the white horse. And it may have nothing to do with weight or Physical ability, you could be, a, some would call a dime piece, <laughs> you know, um, all curves in all the right places, but just be measurable in how you approach people and how you talk to people, how controlling you are, um, or how obsessive you can be when you get in a relationship that you're so needy because you haven't discovered what you need for yourself that you've infused your personality with the other person and you give them no breathing room. So there's a lot of balance. Are you expect- yeah, you expect somebody else to fulfill those missing pieces that you should be fulfilling yourself. Absolutely. Those balance and boundaries are, are key and really important. Uh, Megan, you have been ridiculously awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. This has been amazing. I want you to let everyone who's listening out there know if they have any questions for you, if they want to find out what's new and great about what you're doing in Chicago or in this future business that you're planning, how do they connect with you and where do they go? All right. So um, I would say I'll just go ahead and give my email address out. It's Miss Megan Wessel, and that's M S M E G A N. W-E-S-S-E-L-S at gmail.com. Um, I will actually have a website up uh, probably end of, beginning or end of January, sometime January 2014. Working on it right now, um, it'll be meganwessel.com. And that um, will actually have a piece of the new business that I plan to launch next year as well. So I'm pretty excited about it, working on that. It's one of my big projects right now. That is exciting. (laughs) That is exciting. So everyone who's listening, please email her and let Megan know, even if you just put in the subject line, add me to your database so that when the website is up, she can give you an announcement. We always launch and announce those things with press releases and social media blasts so you know to come check her out. So you can email her now so you don't even have to think about it, and she'll add you to her list of people who want to know more about what Megan Wessels is doing in 2014. Megan, I want to thank you again for coming. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay right there. 
Barrier All right, Breakers. Thank you so much, Akita. You're welcome. You're welcome. Barrier Breakers, this has been an extraordinary way to end our year. This has been a great year. Lead 12th, 12th episode of The Balance Beam. I can't say thank you enough for all the emails, the calls, the questions, the phone calls, and for some of you who know me personally, the text messages about how you had to pull over in the car, listen to it again, replay it, write notes. It's amazing, and I am honored to have been able to provide this for you. All of the experts are amazing in their own way. They're exciting. They bring nuggets. Just unmeasurable, priceless information for how you can balance your life your love and your business even if you're in the beginning or aspiring stages while you go forward in life so we're excited we're looking forward to seeing you in 2014 balance beam is doing some great things and we'll be on stages we'll talk about you talk to you about that later um it's probably nine plus months away but i wanted to give you a little tidbit about that um, we're looking forward to the great things that are happening for Thigpen professionals and Nikita Thigpen at NikitaThigpen.com. So I look forward to seeing you all, talking to some of you, and seeing some of you in the intensive. Until next time, keep breaking barriers.